Okay, so uh, some examples is uh, Trace Monkey, which was used for JavaScript, and PyPy. Okay, tracing just in time. So what does it mean, tracing? Tracing is first you run your program and do some lightweight profiling. For example, counts the number of times uh, you, you, you execute a specific bytecode. When a loop is run often enough, you enter tracing mode. Tracing mode is a special switch where you will run the same code, have ex do perform exactly the same operations, but much slower, because in addition of actually running the next iteration of the loop, you record a trace, a trace of everything you do. Next step, this trace, you analyze it. It's a list of operations you actually did. And then this is turned into machine code. And of course, next time, you execute it directly. OK, this is quite different from a just-in-time compilation, where you will do, we take the f a function, function code or by code, and try to get the best out of it. OK, and then further iterations use the same uh, generated code, of course. OK, this is for tracing just-in-time. Of course, when you run the next iteration of the loop, you have to take care that everything was similar to what you traced in the first place. So the machine code you generated will contain a lot of guards, checking that all the conditions uh, that you have seen while you were tracing are still valid. Suppose that I have a loop that will increase some variable, okay, sometimes, after four billion iterations, in Python, it's, it's likely to become a Python long. So the matching code you generated with a small register to hold your, your, your value won't be valid anymore. So if you still want your generate, generated code to work exactly like uh, with a Python interpreter, and we don't want to change that, uh, it's important to check that your value actually did not overflow. So when you generate an addition between two registers, between two Python integers, uh, and you, you, you emit machine code for it, you have to explicitly check for overflow, just like Python does. And when a guard fails, too bad, you don't have machine code for it. Okay? Then we fall back to the regular uh, interpreter. Okay? Of course, a guard will always fail. One of them is, even in the best case, will fail. That is just the, the end condition of the loop. Where, okay, you have to exit the loop somehow. Oh, this is obvious. And then you fall back to the regular interpreter. The explanation above, what I just said, is that we have a, a trust thing just in time for the full Python language. That is, we are able to follow the execution of your program and emit machine code for it. This is, you know that Python is quite complex. Even a single bytecode can perform a lot of operations and sometimes quite nested. Huh? If, you, if the add method is actually a Python function, you have to call it and so on. This is quite difficult to get right and anyway, it will need to be maintained each time you change the, the Python version. Okay, even between Python 2.2, uh, 2.7.2, 2.7.3, there are some, some, some differences like this. So instead of maintaining a mapping between, for example, bytecodes to, to some machine code, we have a meta tracing just in time. And this is where it begins to be a bit complex or difficult, or at least it took me some time to understand. <laughs> so, so what we do, okay, is that we don't really trust your program being run. PyPy, instead, will trust, by trusting, I mean record all operations, PyPy will trust the interpreter's main loop. You know, a, a Python interpreter, you have a big loop, takes the next operation, it's number x, it corresponds to this operation, calls the operation, and, 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 and continue with the next uh, bytecode. And this is this loop that will be trust, all operations. Of course, we want to trust this interpreter loop, not only doing one loop. It's not interesting, because one loop of the interpreter is only the execution of one bytecode. I want to optimize your loop. I want to optimize loops written in Python language. So what we call a loop for the just-in-time here is a loop 
of the Python language, and not a loop for the interpreter Air Python code. So meta stressing in PyPy will compile one Python loop at a time. Typically, it will be detected with jump absolute op opcodes. I think this is one of the only functions that is allowed to jump back in the interpreter bytecode. Okay, if there is another one, we just have to, 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 to instrument specially this function. So this is how we detect Python loops. It just counts the, the jump absolute. And what is interesting is that it will, when you trace, that is, you trace from the, you execute jump absolute, you say, oh, this is the 1,000th time I run this bytecode in this particular place. So I will trust everything, I mean, I mean continue with the interpreter, but by recording all operations done by the interpreter until we see the next jump absolute for the same place. So this will generate linear code paths, a linear uh, sequence of instructions recording what the interpreter did. The interpreter, the interpreter is written in R Python. R Python is restricted. R Python has fewer operations. So those operations are simpler to trace and to analyze later. So PyPy just in time will not analyze your Python code, it will analyze the interpreter running your loop. Okay? Uh, okay, then for each possible branch in interpreter code, of course the interpreter code contains a lot of if, a lot of conditions like this. If, for example, if my addition didn't overflow, then I continue normally. Okay, this is typical. So for each possible branch that you have in your interpreter, you generate a guard. A guard, it is just a check. I check, is the condition true? If it's true, yes, continue. If it's not, exit. And go back to the, to the, to the standard interpreter. Okay, so for each possible branch, you generate a, a guard that will just bail out. And then there is a, some optimization. If a guard fails often, that's probably that we have something interesting to, to look at and we will enter tracing from this failure again. But typically, if your function has two common paths, I want machine code to be generated for both paths. Uh, demo, so exactly a very, very static demo. So let's see a simple function. Uh, it's a simple loop. I, uh, the, the goal of the function is uh, in a range starting from zero to a big number n, Count the number of multiple of five and count the number of non-multiple of five. So code is quite easy. And uh, so what do we have here? That of course we have, a, uh, we have a loop. This is the one I want to, uh, to interpret, to, to, to optimize. And this loop has two very common branches. That is, this mult plus one is often executed. This not mult is often executed even more. And here, okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. This is a tool we have to, to display the best loops that uh, PyPy generated for us. And in this case, so here we can, so it's just part of a, a snippet of this long page. So you can see the if i modulo 5 equals 0, mult plus 1, and below here there will be an else and so on. And for i, multiple of, uh, um, I modulo 5 equals 0, you can see all the values uh, bytecode. So you have to load the variable i, to load the constant 5, perform the operation binary modulo, load the operation 0, compare with it, and jump if false. Uh, okay. And on the second, on the third, uh, at the third level, you can see all the code that was generated by, uh, by the tracing uh, just in time. And in the tool, there is even a show, show assembler code. You can see a fourth level when you would see uh, actual machine code that was generated. It's not that important. What is interesting is that, is that most of operations are completely removed. Uh, for example, the load constants are removed. The load variable has been removed as well. That is, PyPy just in time managed to remove a lot of overhead associated with the fact that you have a variable named i that will store your values, the, uh, the loop. This variable i, for the normal case, is not needed outside this function. So, no need to allocate one. Okay, and so you see that binary modulo is actually quite a complex operation. 
I'm not sure why exactly. But uh, ah, yes, I know. It's because in C code, uh, C doesn't have the same behavior, or the, the, the machine operation of modulo has not the same behavior for negative numbers, stuff like that. And then, interesting, mult plus equal one. So there is the load fast is just a guard now. Okay? Lo load const one has been completely removed. And when, you, when we add something, uh, then we just access the pure, uh, the, what is it, uh, the integer um, field of this number, and we add it. And there is a set probably uh, behind. Okay, and we check that we didn't overflow. Otherwise, it's still another, another path. So here you have the, uh, and there is even a, a tool for this, to analyze logs and so on, so after the fact, after you have run your code, how uh, all the overhead can be removed by a, a just-in-time compilation. It is still exact Python code. That is, if at some point, I'm sh uh, I don't know where exactly, but I'm sure that somewhere there is a guard, uh, guard this one uh, maybe, that will check that nobody uh, attach a, a debugger to your program. You have to take this into account as well. Okay, so nobody tried to look and to mess with those internal stuff. So everything that Python does, uh, com uh, even debugging, even looking uh, at uh, frame variables, are still respected uh, after uh, optimization. But since most of the time it's not really done, you don't really need it, then with PyPy, you have a global guard about it, a, go a global test, and that's it. And as long as you don't have any compiler or other uh, attached function, um, then, uh, then you, you don't really need to allocate most of our bit. Okay. So, uh, okay. So if you have questions about just in time, we can go to it later. I think I've got more discussions about uh, uh, the, the impact of it. Then this infamous guild, how to kill it. So you already know that Python has this uh, global interpreter lock. The advantage of a global interpreter lock is that your interpreter is easy to write. Okay, so don't remove that, please. <laughs> and Python code should never take fault the interpreter. And if you don't get your uh, locking primitives right, if you don't lock correctly objects, your interpreter is, will, will, uh, will crash. Uh, so the guild is one of the easy way to ensure it. So there is one possible alternative, and Jiton does it. Uh, you have careful locks around each object. It's difficult to do it right, and it's difficult to avoid deadlock. There is, uh, I think there is a proof somewhere that there is no guarantee that Jiton cannot deadlock before, because of those careful locks. And even if it doesn't lock today, maybe you add some other features to the language and it will lock tomorrow. Okay? So it's quite difficult to maintain correct. Or, so the PyPy way, which is a bit different, don't write threaded code, but run on multiple cores, because this is what you want. Uh, most of the time, you don't really need those threads. Or do you? What you just want is to run several things at the same time, okay? And run it, possibly, on several cores, so that you can run faster. Okay, so the goal is that, at least at the Python level, you don't write threaded code. So this is, um, this is, this is quite, quite crunch, even for me at the beginning. So one solution, uh, so this is all invented by Armin Rigo. So it's the uh, initial inventor of, uh, of um, Psycho, the main developer for PyPy, and he, he came with this idea later. So it's called uh, mutual exclusion, automatic mutual exclusion. For this, you have to identify tasks in your code. What is a task? A task is a function uh, that is uh, a well, list of functions that are allowed to run in some, in any order, that is, good candidates for you to have threads. A task can start with a task, of course, and, and uh, well, don't care about consistency here, that is, the task doesn't have to lock, unlock objects, it will, uh, it will just run um, and process its data uh, as if it was alone. So an example of good task, so you respond to incoming data, typically you are in an asynchronous framework, uh, you just receive a, a, a web connection. So what do you do? Okay, you run this function. I initiate this. I will return this uh, this HTML code, and so on. 
Uh, example of task while well, transform a PyPy flow graph. This is one task that the PyPy translator uh, itself has. That is, when I analyze the code of one function, it's an independent task. Independent means that I don't really care uh, how they are executed. I just want them to be executed fast. I want them to be executed in isolation because they will probably modify global variables. But I don't really care of whether one will finish before the, the other. And then the framework is responsible for scheduling and runs those tasks. I want them to run them of several cores. Of course, that's why um, most of us do threads in the first place. And I also want the system to take care of consistency. The task didn't take care uh, about consistency. Okay. So it's typically like, uh, well, uh, an asynchronous application like Twisted, for example, uh, which nowadays runs everything in one thread that have to, to that, that could benefit of running tasks on uh, several uh, several cores and still don't have to deal about consistency. Consistency often means locks, uh, mutexes. Of course, there will be several threads. Probably threads is the only way to discuss with multiple cores, no way is. Okay, probably on the, on the best way. But I, want, I don't want this to appear in the code. So one solution is to use software transactional memory. So software transactional memory is basically you do your operations, you record all writes you would do to memory, but you don't commit those writes. And only when the transaction ends, then you commit, and other tasks can see uh, the changes you, you have made to the memory. OK? So, so PyPy has a transformer, has a, a translation aspect to, uh, for this. So all details are added during translation. When your interpreter is about to read one field from a Python object, when the interpreter is about to, well, to do everything else, okay, all these operations done by the interpreter will be recorded and committed only at the end of transaction. Of course, this is expected to be twice slower. With one single worker, if you have to trace everything on write, everything afterwards, it's mostly uh, probably double of writes. So it's expected to be twice slower. But the idea is that it can scale very well. And of course, we, we, help that the, uh, we hope that the tracing just in time can help by identifying objects that never escapes. And so identifying objects that cannot possibly be seen by other threads, by other tasks, sorry, by other tasks, and so uh, remove the overhead for those objects. Okay, so this is, uh, I think that's all, yeah. So this is one plan. Uh, there is a branch in PyPy to do that. Uh, Armin Rigo even uh, gets funded for this as well. And uh, well, just as before, it has done 80% of the work, and 80% of the work remains to be done. I mean, it has done all the easy stuff. One of the remaining difficult parts probably will be uh, the garbage collector has to cooperate a lot. So you probably need a, a, a multi-threaded garbage collector as well. And so on. Okay, so it's still in progress, but uh, there are already good, um, good signs that it will work uh, someday. So about speed, uh, this is, uh, I'd say, the only interest of PyPy is that it's supposed to be faster. So we monitor the speed very closely. So there is this speedpypy.org site, okay, with, uh, with a lot of graphs. Uh, its benchmarks are run every day on where there are, uh, when there are bad performances, we have to, 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 to analyze and, okay, and, uh, and fix them and so on. So it's, it's closely monitored. Um, okay, so this is Python 2.7, and this has the various tests for, for, for real world benchmarks. Uh, okay, it's too difficult to see here, but this is a small twisted application here. Here we've got, we've got a Spitfire uh, template rendering. If there is some, I don't know, there is some uh, end body uh, computations, so some objects, uh, frameworks, and so on. I don't know if there is a Django benchmark. I don't know, could be. I see Riedveld uh, page. Okay. okay, so these are uh, real-world uh, uh, applications. And uh, 
and most of the time, it's much, much, much faster. So typically, it's twice faster, and, for, uh, and, and it can be even to, uh, to, to five times or even 10 times for heavily computation tasks. But without a just-in-time, uh, PyPy is roughly twice slower as CPython. Why? Because PyPy is written with generated code. This generated C code is not as optimized as CPython, which has been carefully optimized with really good C code and a lot of work to make it a bit, fighter, a bit fa uh, faster here and there. So, so with, with PyPy uh, uh, um, standard C code generator, it's twice slower. Also remember that um, the just-in-time optimizes loops, only loops. Uh, what is it? And, and it takes some time to start. Um, PyPy is a bit slower, and it only starts the just-in-time after 1,000 loops. Okay? So if your program is a simple Python script that runs in half a second, okay, it's likely it, it will uh, likely not be sped up by PyPy. Uh, PyPy is better with simple code. If you tr just access attributes, just call functions, that's it. Okay. If you try to be too clever, uh, PyPy will not under uh, the just in time will not understand what you are trying to do, or the in the loop it has to analyze will be much larger, which complex operations, and it won't succeed to generate efficient machine code. Uh, the just-in-time, on the other hand, is very good at removing unneeded operations in normal Python code. Just like, as I said, attribute lookups, function calls, they are inline, and, uh, and of course, uh, destroy intermediate values, completely avoid allocation of uh, intermediate values. PyPy today, I think this is not complete. Okay, never mind. So PyPy today is a very compliant implementation of Python. That is Python 2.7.3 today. Uh, 3.2 is in progress. Uh, and it passes all C Python test suits. Okay. Some tests are skipped. I will talk about them later. And there are also many uh, implementation details that are actually not in the test suite, but which are important somehow. Uh, there are a lot of details in a Python implementation that are not defined, but that people actually rely on it. Some modules are still missing. So some obscure module image operation, I don't know if it's widely used. TKinter is still uh, not available, except for one. Uh, in one case, I will, I will tell after. There are still some missing functions, typically some, uh, let's say, obscure platform-specific functions. Yesterday, I've seen that POSIX set groups is missing. It's not difficult to implement, it's just that uh, the test suite, if the function is not implemented, just skip the test. So we haven't seen that this failure yet. Um, so maybe you are, so mostly in the POSIX module, there are some functions like that. And there are some implementation details that still differ, and that will differ. Uh, the complete list, you have got this PyPy differences page. Just Google for this string, and, uh, and you can find it. PyPy today works on the, and is Works by I mean uh, is supported on Linux, OS X, Windows, uh, not Windows 64 bit yet. It's a weird platform for some reasons. Uh, and we have successful stories with Django, Twisted, uh, Pylons, and so on. I know for sure that, for example, the twistedmatrix.com server, last time we, uh, I asked, still runs with a PyPy server. And there is also support for many uh, C extensions modules. PyPy is written in Python, but still have support for modules written in C. That was it. One big difference, one the most, uh, the most common cause of differences between PyPy and CPython will be because of the garbage collector. Okay, for this simple function, okay, save some content in a file, I open a file, write, return true. Okay, in CPython, and thanks to reference counting, so object F is freed, closed, okay, completely destroyed, as soon as the function exits. The F variable is not needed, so there is a decref on the F object, and the file is closed. It's not true in PyPy, just like it would be in Jython, which has exactly the same, uh, 
which has exactly the same behavior. That is, the calls to the del method are delayed. In this case, when you exit the function, the file is not closed yet. So that means that if another function opens the file and tries to read it, the data is not there. OK? Uh, so calls are del to delayed, because we, uh, the, the del, just like in Java finalize, is called when the garbage collection actually runs. And JSON has the same issue. And it is the same for our weak references, of course. No, it's a bit better with Python 3, because even with C Python 3, this code will raise a warning when you run it, saying that, oh, this file was closed by destruction. You should close it explicitly. OK? So the good code for that is simply to use the with statement. OK? It's almost the same. OK? Yeah? OK? It's almost the same, uh, the same amount of code. OK? But the with statement will ensure that the file is properly closed as soon as we exit the with block. OK? And this will work with PyPy as well, of course. The close method is called. An, um, an interesting subject is extension modules. PyPy is written in Python, in R Python. Uh, so uh, what can I do with all my C extension modules that will use a Py string as string and so on, that has written in C? So we have this this module in PyPy, which is called CPyX, which is a bit transparent, of course. So on the goal of this project is to support extension modules written in C. So it started as an experiment, but it was meant to fail in the beginning. But we actually, we didn't, and it works for many modules. So what is it? It's a layer. Uh, it's an implementation of each individual function of the CPython API. And how do, is it written? And, uh, and it's written to call, of course, Air Python code in PyPy, in the PyPy world. So the, Py, the Python API is very rich. And today, we implement roughly 400 uh, functions. On the, so it's a, it's a great amount of work. And it already works for many modules. So there are many successful modules that use Swig. And uh, so P, PyOpenSSL works quite well uh, on PyPy, even if it's written in C. And also, um, some time ago, I managed to have uh, a WX Python, which is a huge C++ uh, module uh, working uh, with PyPy, and PyGame as well. PyGame with, uh, with that S, I don't know. OK, and probably uh, many of them work. Uh, okay. There are still some modules that won't work as, as is, like NumPy, for sure. NumPy C code will not work with PyPy because it makes too far too many assumptions about the underlying memory layout of the Python interpreter. It works, but, well, it's a pile of hacks. You know, it started as an experiment. It's as a hack that was supposed to fail. So it's still a hack that works. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, PyPy, in its most efficient implementation, used moving garbage collector. In C Python, you've got a, C, a, P, a, a Py object pointer. A Py object pointer is not supposed to move. Okay? And there are many modules that will actually get a, an object and cache it for some time and reuse it later. If the pointer moves, uh, well, it's not, uh, it's not nice for the extension module. So, uh, so, so it's done, so that's why it's slow. Because a Py object is actually a proxy to the actual uh, object. Uh, that is that, that where, where the address can move. Okay. So that's an example, uh, and the maybe one explanation why it's very slow to do. Yeah, so on, on the, so, oh yeah, all the, all the compatibility we have to, to support as well. But it works for, for many modules. That means that most of your extension module, if you write an extension module because it's faster, for PyPy, please don't. I know that some projects have two implementations of the same module, one in pure Python, which is quite simple, and one written in C as an extension module to be faster. So in PyPy, your Python module definitely will be faster and probably even faster than, than, than with C Python, thanks to the just-in-time compiler. So it's a bit different here. If you have two versions of your module, please use the pure Python version for your extension module. Sometimes it's not possible, of course, when you use OpenSSL or, 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 or WX Python, that doesn't work. And so there is um, an experiment, no, it's not an experiment, a new project that I started uh, some months ago, 
which is called CFFI, started always by the same guy, okay, Armin. So CFFI is a bit like C types, but done right. By done right, that means that C types only work at the ABI level. You have to specify the precise memory layouts. With CFFI, it will you 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 define your uh, your external functions with uh, a C um, C syntax, and there is a configure time, uh, there is a configure operation that will actually use the C compiler to get the real memory layout for your platform. So you need GCC once, okay, uh, to generate all uh, intermediate data, the actual structures of, uh, well, uh, the actual uh, size of structures, uh, the real size of all parameters, and so on. And, and, um, and then this information, use uh, GCC for the first time, and then this is cached and reused for next runs, of course. And this module has an implementation for C Python, of course, and for PyPy as well. And in PyPy, it's written a very just-in-time friendly. That is, most of the time, uh, I think all C functions that you do this way are actually compiled by the just-in-time compiler as an actual function call uh, in the C. Uh, no, sorry, in, in assembler. So it is as efficient as um, a C compiler compiling a function call. Which is quite different from uh, from C types. C types we use a FFI, well another libffi uh, library, to dynamically build a call to a specific function. Okay, and for C Python it will actually generate a small extension modules as well. So it's just as efficient as a C function call. Okay, this is an exploration. Let's see how it goes. It works quite well for simple cases. Let's see how it works for. Uh, larger libraries, like I want to write object with that. Uh, of course, I have to access C functions, but most of the time when you provide a good library, a good extension module is not only access to C functions, C libraries, and functions called, and so on, but also how you expose this to Python. Uh, you don't want to expose a char, uh, was it pointer, to pointer, to char, uh, to a Python application. It would probably be a list of strings. So how do you converse this? And all those data conversions, it's also an important part. So uh, let's see how this evolves when you have to deal with more complex frameworks. Also, how does it, how does it evolve if you have to interface with C++ uh, code as well, which doesn't work at the moment. But it's a good, uh, it's a good experiment. PyPy is still um, a project in progress. We need uh, some volunteers, so I'm also here to Okay, to give you, uh, to, to invite you to contribute to PyPy as well. So there are a lot of tasks, like the port to Python 3. Okay, Python 3, Python 3.2, and soon to be Python 3.3. Okay, new versions, of, of course. Uh, Windows 64 bits, if some people are interested. There are a lot of modules to finish, a lot of functions to have PyPy, a real Python implementation. Okay, real, 100% sure. So also to, uh, we also have to optimize specific parts. I know for sure that the compiler is a bit slow. Um, I tried on huge uh, Python files, and it's, uh, the import command is a bit slow, for, for it could be. And also we have to, to, to polish the way we distribute PyPy, how it will integrate with other tools, like uh, I know that virtual environments work correctly, how it works for, for, for other distributions. Uh, there are also tasks how to improve the generation of machine codes, so more platforms, better register allocator, a lot of tasks. Some tasks are easy, some tasks are really specialized to something. Um, okay, we have to, have to work a lot to improve uh, debuggability uh, and also documentation of the PyPy code as well. So there are a lot, a lot of easy, medium, and hard tasks. Okay, if you want to specialize on the compiler, why not? If you want to specialize on the optimize, uh, multiplication for long objects, why not? Okay, there are still a lot of work. And that's it. So uh, we are always available on, on freenode.net, so PyPy channel. Uh, 